Hey guys, it's Emma Vigling with TYT Politics. Uh, I hope everyone had a great July 4th. Um, but now on to more serious topics. Uh, I did want to talk about Chris Kobach, who is the current Secretary of State in Kansas, a gubernatorial candidate for that same state, and a Trump administration favorite. Uh, there is an argument to be made that he is potentially one of the most dangerous elected officials, the most dangerous men in America, and I can't say that I disagree with that argument. Um, Kobach has recently dominated headlines for his role in President Donald Trump's Presidential Advisory Committee on Election Integrity, which is chaired by Vice President Mike Pence, and Kobach is the vice chair of it. They recently asked all 50 states for each voter's full name, address, birth date, and political party, as well as the last four digits of every voter's social security number. 14 st states won't comply at all, won't send any of the information, while 44 of the states will provide only some of the data. Uh, Kobach himself said Kansas would be unable to turn all over all of the information. So really this commission is designed to bolster Trump's claims that millions of people voted illegally in the 2016 election. Uh, newsflash, Trump actually did win the election, uh, but that's really just to investigate why he lost the popular vote. Uh, the White House had repeated this claim and has repeated this claim with senior advisor Stephen Miller stating that 14% of non-citizens are registered to vote. That is not true. It is a reference to a recent study done by Virginia's Old Dominion uh, University, in addition to the paper being really heavily criticized by other political scientists and academics, the 14% figure is completely taken out of context. 14% is just the top of this shaky study's confidence interval. There's a 97.5% chance that the true percentage of non-citizens registered to vote is lower than that. But here are the facts I will give to you since, honestly, the, this commission is not interested in facts. State prosecution records find that non-citizens voting accounts for between 0.0003% and 0.001% of all votes cast. Why? Because if you're an undocumented immigrant in America, are you really going to risk going to jail or deportation to vote? Probably not. You can be fined up to $100,000 and imprisoned for up to one to three years uh, for voting as a non-citizen. And these numbers aren't just hypothetical. Florida actually did a study of their 12 million registered active voters. And of its 12 million registered voters, they only removed 85 from the statewide list with one singular person convicted for fraud. Trump, hey, buddy. You won the presidency. It doesn't really matter what happened in the popular vote, but that's really what this commission is about. It's basically to make Trump feel better that he didn't win the popular vote with taxpayer dollars headed by Vice President Mike Pence and Chris Kobach. Kobach also continues to claim that, yes, three million people are registered in multiple states, but that includes uh, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and Trump's very own son-in-law, Jared Kushner. That doesn't necessarily mean that all of those people voted in multiple states, and by necessarily I mean it doesn't mean that at all, but yet Kobach continues to push this narrative. Kobach has been pushing this narrative of illegal voting way before Trump used voter suppression as a way to make himself feel better uh, in his therapy session. He's made life harder uh, for millions of Americans trying to vote, and he will, if he gets his way, continue to disenfranchise millions of, America, of Americans. Coincidentally, these people that Kobach is trying to disenfranchise are likely Democratic voters, poor and minority Americans. Kobach has proudly deemed himself as the ACLU's worst nightmare. The ACLU has filed four lawsuits against Kobach since he came into office in 2010, challenging Kansas's Secure and Fair Elections Act, or SAFE Act, how's that for Orwellian, a 2011 state law that requires people to show a birth certificate, passport, or naturalization papers to vote. These laws are effective in decreasing turnout for poor voters who are much less likely to have that kind of paperwork. So while maybe, yes, it's effective in preventing those five, maybe, uh, undocumented immigrants from voting in the election, it mostly just disenfranchises 
poor minority Americans, and the proof is in the pudding. In states with stricter voter ID laws, turnout among Hispanic voters is 7.1 percentage points lower in general elections and 5.3 points lower in primaries in states with stricter voter ID laws. The laws also reduce turnout among African American and Asian American voters. White turnout, according to the study highlighted in the Washington Post, is largely unaffected. Huh, you don't say. In general elections in non-strict states, the gap between white and Latino turnout is on average 4.9 points. Strict voter ID laws, that gap grows to a substantial 13.2 points. Kobach is really the godfather of this kind of modern day voter suppression, particularly done by the Republican Party, the Democratic Party in their primaries. That's an entirely another story. Uh, but Kobach was really able to convince uh, Kansas's state le legislature in an unprecedented fashion to give him prosecutorial power to pursue voter fraud with the same claim of thousands of citizens illegally voting. So now that Kobach has this prosecutorial power, how many convictions did he come up with? nine convictions in his own state in this entire time that he's had this power, and only one non-citizen. Mostly, those prosecutions and those convictions were elderly or older Republicans. So this is voodoo. It's just made up. Kobach also heads the Interstate Voter Registration Cross-Check Program, which has been reported on extensively by the great investigative reporter Greg Pallast. Uh, I reached out to Greg Pallast to get a statement on this particular system, and he said as follows. Kobach is the man behind two supremely devious forms of racial vote suppression. First is interstate cross-check, which matches voter rolls of different states to suss out those voting twice like Maria Cristina Hernandez, whom he accused of voting a second time as Maria Isabel Hernandez. This is a real example. He also stated he'll use his new access to Homeland Security files to hunt for aliens on our own voter rolls. That's the same name game. Jose Garcia was deported. And can you believe it? There is a Jose Garcia on the Arizona voter rolls. Got to be the same guy. Must have swum back from Guatemala to vote. It would be ludicrous if it didn't rob over 1 million legal voters of their rights. So I really encourage you guys to check out Greg Palace's work on this particular topic. It's incredible. But Chris Kobach's racial targeting goes beyond voting. Uh, Chris Kobach was actually one of the authors of SB 1070 in Arizona. That was the infamous law that required police to determine the immigration status of someone arrested or detained if there is a reasonable suspicion that they are not in the U.S. legally. So that basically tells police you are required legally to racially profile in Arizona, which is remarkable. But Chris Kobach really got his start in the George W. Bush administration when he was hired to head the National Security Entry-Exit Re Registration System in 2002, a kind of proto-Muslim ban that was used to screen and monitor travelers from majority Muslim countries. Huh, does that sound familiar? In less than a year, Kobach had collected the personal data of more than 130,000 people in the U.S. based on not much more than their religion and country of origin. Yet, in the 14 years of its existence, NSEERS produced no convictions. He also spent his time suing states, including Kansas, California, and Nebraska, for granting in-state tuition to undocumented immigrants. Wow. And he was also one of the earliest proponents of birtherism, much like Trump, uh, calling on Obama to release his birth certificate when, by the way, at the time he actually already had. But make no mistake, this is important. Some are trying to link Kobach exclusively to Trump to say that he is this brand of Trumpism in the Republican Party. But actually, Chris Kobach goes back to the Bush administration and even had significant ties to Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney's Free and Strong America PAC was one of the largest donors to Chris Kobach's successful 2010 campaign for Kansas Secretary of State. He was also an advisor to Mitt Romney on immigration issues. So he is a part of this establishment class of Republicans as well. He is not just the Steve Bannon Trump wing. 
he is ingrained in the Republican Party, so much so that he attended a retreat with representatives from Koch Industries and other GOP secretaries of state who are in charge of writing ballot initiative questions. So this is the Koch brothers attempting to manipulate our democracy in another way by having these secretaries of state write questions that are favorable to their own industry. I asked Greg Palace really just what's a summary of who Chris Kobach is? And this is what he said to me. Kobach understands the power of nightmares. He has captured America's fear of the other to spin a tale of black voters voting multiple times, an old Ku Klux Klan trope of Mexicans swimming in the Rio Grande to vote for Hillary Clinton, Kobach's estimate, a million of them, and sleeper cells of Muslims ready to blow up a hundred American cities. He is a fear salesman without compare. My point is, Chris Kobach is not dangerous because he's an exception to the Republican Party. Chris Kobach is ingrained in the establishment of the Republican Party. He is the Republican Party. He's not just a part of this Trump mania. He is a staple of their ideology. In, before 2006, no state required photo identification to vote on election day. Today, 10 states have this requirement. A total of 33 states, representing more than half the nation's population, have some version of voter identification rules on the books. Yes, the Democrats have their issues with voter suppression, as we did see in 2016 in the primary with Hillary Clinton versus Bernie Sanders. But the Republican Party has made it clear that they want to preserve their white majority by systematically disenfranchising black, Latino, and other minority poorer voters throughout the country. And Chris Kobach has led this effort proudly since the Bush administration. They have been rooted in fears of immigration and in nationalistic pride, which is really just white nationalism, racism. And they have embraced Kobach. Kobach might be the governor of Kansas. And this is his history as a proud bigot and as someone who has made it his life's mission to make sure that a certain class of people does not vote so that his brand of Republican whiteness remains in power. And that is the danger of the Trump administration. If Kobach is able to succeed, which it looks like he may not be able to in this manner, he can do it in another more insidious, uh, subtle form later, then Republicans can continue to have power. The Democrats may continue to run weak campaigns, but if voters continue to be disenfranchised, the Democrats and other more progressive parties will be fighting an uphill battle to get any seats because now that the Republicans are in power, they are actively working to disenfranchise voters that will likely vote blue. And we have to be aware of it because it's happening on a systematic scale. And Chris Kobach is the face of that systemic horror. All right, have a good weekend, guys.